Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for an out-of-the-pack review of the Mechanicum Karaknos Assault Tank by Forgeworld. So, here we have the latest addition to the Servants of the Omnissiah Force uh, in the form of this newly released kit by Forgeworld. This vehicle, the Karaknos, was a new heavy support choice that was included in Book 7 Inferno. This was uh, previewed at the... February Horus Heresy weekend of 2017. So it is now released and here we have an example to look at. We're going to unpack this, have a look at the parts, uh, check the kit quality and see what's going on. And uh, just so you can uh, see what we've got. There you go. Kraknos Assault Tank. So, yes. Now, names. Now, Forge World like to do, you know, they like to do their sort of pseudo-Latin and pseudo-Greek. Uh, names. Now, with the Mechanicum, everything is loosely styled around the Byzantium Empire, so the Eastern Roman Empire. So it's more Greek influence names than the sort of more Romanesque Latin style names of, uh, say, the Legion forces. And I was trying to work out what the Karaknos name means, and uh, it, it isn't a, an actual word. The only thing I've figured out so far is that if you look at the first four letters, it makes a name Kara or Kara, uh, which is a female Greek name, which means pure. So my current theory on this is this is kind of this is actually a bit of an ironic name because the main gun on this tank or the main weapon system is a rack of bomb projectors which have got radiological warheads. So is it a bit of an ironic name? Not sure. If any of you guys know uh, Greek better, perhaps you've uh, got a suggestion. Or some ideas that you could leave in the comments. Let's. This is a full resin kit. Um, this is not. On, this is brand new. It's not been opened. So let's have a look. It comes sealed in one of these uh, new style forge world white boxes. This cost. Uh, 105 pounds so it is comparable in cost to say well it's a little bit cheaper than the recently released uh, Cronus Grav Carrier for the Adeptus Custodes right so we shall drop the camera down a touch let's have a look inside so I've got a bit of packing ooh got loads and loads of parts here so we've got what we've got. We have got a we've got a bag of components, right? The bits there, and then we've got a bag of small components. Yeah. This looks uh, this is actually this looks uh, a bit more com somewhat more complicated kit than I was expecting, having uh, had some experience with the Triara, so I only just had over a dozen parts. This looks like it's got quite a lot more to it. Right, let's have a look in here. So, oh, go, wow, look at these. Look at that. So this is one of the, um, one of the hull sides to the Kraknos. Yeah, that's a, yeah, love the detailing. And this looks splendidly cast as well. Nice, um, We've got the application of this sort of segment of track off here as a way of hiding the main key attachment points. Will be a track piece that's go that goes over here, over here, and this is becoming increasingly common. And it, you know, it's, it's, it's a good design feature um, to hide those any sort of imperfections or mess around those key attachment points. So that's one side of the one track unit, and here is the second of the true two track units. Same sort of stuff. Compare this to those. Yeah. Tiny, there's a there's a little bit of mold displacement there. Uh, they go run up there, but that's that's not. Nothing that can't be cleaned up. 
a little bit there as well. A little bit more work to do there, but that's still that's still quite fine. Nothing that can't be done there. But yeah, those are beautifully cast. They look really nice. Really, really nice. Very crisp. I mean, you know, this is um, I've purchased this today on the day of release. I'd, uh, I swung by Warhammer World today and uh, picked this up. So yeah, it all looks very nice. So this should be a brand new kit out of fresh molds. So we've got, um, this is like the main hull or the lower hull. This is the uh, shock ram. All looks very nice, love the detailing. I, I do think the, the detailing on these shock rams is brilliant. These are styled on Greek triremes. The sort of ram prows on them, very nice. Yeah, that looks great. So if we bob that in between there, and then we've got two inner track units as well. So these are gonna sit, uh, I forget that. These guys here are gonna sit in there like that. Let's take a look at these. And this is, a, in a, I mean, this is kind of like basically repurposing of the Triaros hull, I guess. Um, but there are some significant differences. I also have some interesting ideas what I'm going to do with this kit, which I'll come to later. That's good. I mean, oh, it's a little bit of, let's get the camera focus. Uh, come on camera. There's a bit of slip in there, but that, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, can build, that can be either just completely sanded down or built up with a bit of filler, depending what fits the kit the best. Uh, and then another one, on the, the opposite side. And these details are gonna poke through uh, those track units. Bit more of a, bit more of a pronounced mold slip here, running down this one. Got some displaced detail there. I guess, though, with this, this isn't, how vi I wonder how visible this is once it's assembled. That's gonna go in like so. Yeah, not too visible. I mean, it's kind of like gonna be on the underside. So yeah, that, I can fix that. That's not too bad. Just have to cut, I mean, I don't know. I might cut it down, I might fill it, but yeah. But overall, that's very nicely cast and it, uh, yeah, nice big chunky resin pieces there. Oops, everything's now going flying everywhere. Boxes are wobbling. No, it's all right. Okay, so let's see what else we've got in the box. So we have a instruction manual and a quarter control sheet. So normally I do quarter control first, but as we've, it was at the bottom of the box, we'll do it last. Who did this? So this was uh, 13th of the 3rd. So uh, this kit was put together a couple of weeks back. So quite a recent thing. And uh, I don't know who's that. SC did the quality control. Right. So let's have a look at this instruction manual. So Mechanicum Karaknos Assault Tank. And if you want to read, if you want to read the bump about it, you can do a pause and have a, a little scan over that. But yeah, the key thing is, I mean, so this is built on the Triaros chassis, and it's essentially a Triaros with the exception of we have these two batteries, these sort of like radiological bomb launcher batteries, and then we have these two lightning sentinels mounted on the side. And this is kind of I like the look of this vehicle, and it's a quirky looking one. If you've seen various artwork of a Mechanicum, they do have some weird and wonderful vehicles in terms of just slightly crazy looking designs. And I think this one for me kind of captures that craziness with these kind of gun arms at the back and, and what have you. And it's, it's styled differently at the front here because it, it had a, the uh, Triaros had a prow, but this has got a smooth front. I'm gonna, my plan is to convert this to make it a dual purpose vehicle. So it can be both a Triaros and a Karaknos. So what do we get? So we get the we get the diagrams. The basic hull construction is fairly simple. It's large pieces. And, and the main complicated construction is around 
the two Lightning Sentinels, and then the Mortar Axe. And they've changed the design of the hull compared to the Triaros. So the upper hull is now split into one, two, three main separate sections, and then you've got this flare shield mount as well. Whereas on the original Triaros, it was just a single piece. So that's, uh, that's somewhat different. And if we flick through the instructions, so these newer CAD printed instructions are much easier to follow. I, I think they're much clearer in general than the old photocopy ones. I mean, I always find that with these, it's still worth kind of getting all your bits where ready and push fitting and test fitting everything. Because sometimes I found I've built things in different sequences to what they show. Now, this kit's got some lovely features which I'm going to try and exploit. So the first one is, I, th I believe that these, as it says it, so the mortar assemblies, it says don't glue them so you can do them in an open ready to fire orientation or a closed orientation. So you can make, you know, so you, you've got the versatility. So that's first, the first good thing. The second good thing is the way the lightning sentinels of a lightning blast is attached and they clip on the side. My plan, and I'm going to have to get some really strong magnets to do this, is to magnetize these. And then I've got some spare parts, which I think I can then use to put the anti-infantry weapons onto the hull from a standard Triaros. And then I'm going to use this as a dual purpose Karaknos and Triaros tank. And then, and that shows you what it looks like when it's finished. Yeah. With the mortar bay open and closed. Yeah, so a, a great looking vehicle. And if you if you like Mechanicum crazy looking vehicles and, and the the various vehicles that, I think it's Stuart Williamson who does these, one of the Forge World sculptors. Uh, I love the look of this. I, I think it's really great looking. Right, let's have a look at a few more of these parts. So these are kind of, this looks like the hull part. So this is the rear assembly. The rear upper hull, and into the so what we've got here, we've got so the 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 the, the flare shield mount's going to sit in here. That all looks good. Uh, a bit of bit of a slip, a bit of a slip to correct there. Don't think that's too bad. I don't even know if that's going to show. That might actually just sit in profile. That might sit behind the hull side, but that's a, that'd be easy enough to put right. Uh, so that's that one. Then this is the front hull, the front upper hull. That looks nice. I think it's a a very sensible and wise design decision by the by the by the sculptors and the design team to break this upper hull section into a smaller number of parts. And I've got some nice internal detail in kind of like where the um, the mortar bay goes there. I've got some little, little mold displacements to put right, but nothing big. Nicely cast. As uh, these look pretty free of release agent, so I don't think there's um, the the these are cleanly cast, and there's not too much clean at work to do. You've got a pair of nice big crazy cogs to get at the back. Very sharp. That's the best. Let's look at these. These are probably the sharpest cast cogs I've had on these Mechanicum tanks so far. These look, um, yeah, these are pretty good. There's a bit of work to do on the inside of the spokes. You can actually save yourself a little bit of time because you can only see about half of the spokes once it's assembled. So if you've got some slippage, which isn't uncommon on this sort of part, if you if you just sort of like rotate it in, uh, let me see if we've got a view of the rear of the tank. Don't know if we do. Yeah, you, go. you can kind of hide you can sort of like just put your any worse spokes on the inside and then it won't be it won't be visible but yeah but even so but those are but those are those are beautifully cast very nice happy with those this is so this is the mortar bay that's good and then this is the rear hull plate A little slippy there, but uh, yeah, but very nicely cast this, and yeah, very cleanly cast as well. Yeah, it looks really good. This it this reminds me of the 
macro carried explorator I got, which was very cleanly cast as well. And then these two are the doors for the mortars, which are going to um, uh, oh, there we go. Right, that's, so there's kind of like some sort of hinge assembly there. There you go. So that's you can see how I mean you can't I can't articulate it properly because of the keys, but you can see how that's going to go together. Yeah, that looks fun. That looks it's very nicely cast and that also looks fun. Right. Let's uh, move these out of the way and then we'll take a quick look at the what's in the contents of the detail bag. So this is all parts to make the weaponry in the main. Drop the camera down a little bit. Right, firstly, the, this is the, the mount for the flare shields and the arms for the lightning sentinels. Now, that looks good, that. So we've got, now, I was talking about magnetizing the lightning sentinels on. So these are the arms. So that's going to go like that. So there's a decent space to put a magnet in there. Got a bit of a, a bit of a slip there. Not too bad. Not in the detail, so that's good. And then you've got a nice chunky attachment point backed up by a nice thick piece. So you can get some, I'm not sure, maybe some quite a long cylinder magnet in there. I need to have a think about the geometry of the magnetization, but yeah, that's good. I mean, even, I mean, aside from the whole conversion idea I've got, magnetizing those probably isn't a bad idea, so it'll make it a lot easier to transport because they're kind of quite gawky and they stick out to the uh, lightning set, the blasters. Right. So they've then got a whole series of these guys, which are the munitions for the nasty rad bomb launcher. And these are kind of, these are, these, these are really horrible weapons, these. Very, very nasty. A mixture of plasma and rad. Fancy, yeah. Fancy that for something to spoil your afternoon. So how many we got? We got a whole load there. One, two, that. Yeah, there's loads of them. Gosh, how many is that? Oh, another one. So there's this one, two, so there's four racks of five and then two racks of four. So those are kind of like going to make those fan arrays. Right. And a quick look at the parts of a lightning blaster. That's, that's the other hinge piece for the mortar bay. A couple of pipes. One arm. That's another arm that. Don't know what that one is. These are the cowls for the lightning blasters. Very nice. Two of those. I got the, uh, these are the two. These are the two pieces of track that are going to go on the back where the key attachment points were. And interesting they've done so this helps you with locating them so they've done a different number of track sections which means you can't confuse the two uh, and also i think it'll create the impression that the tracks are in slightly different positions on each side of a tank i believe which makes it look a little bit more real and less symmetrical these two are the flare shield emitters always look they, they're kind of have similarities to the design cues of void shield generators a little bit of slippage to correct on the underside. But the important thing there is the top is really well formed. So you haven't got any, those are really nicely formed and no air bubbles or anything on that. So that looks really good. Uh, some power coupling or something. Or power, perhaps a power capacitor. Or maybe these look more like capacitors as well.
just quickly, I'm just going to work through these fairly quickly now. So it's quite a, there's quite a lot of components to this kit. As I say, there's a lot more components to this model um, than you had with the Triaros, which is quite a simple kit by comparison. This has got a lot more going on with it. It's going to be a fascinating thing to do, this one. Uh, these, I guess, are the mounting arms for the lightning blasters. Again, uh, and I think those are these are like a pair of rotation pins. More tubes. I'm uh, I'm I'm intrigued to work out how all this goes together. There's a lot of parts that are going to go into these lightning blasters. That's the second attachment arm to mount onto the actual body of the vehicle itself. Uh, more capacitors, very nicely detailed. More capa How many capacitors has this got? One, two, three, I think it's got four sets, there's loads. And then finally, and we'll finish on this, we've got the nozzle, the, the barrels and nozzle, shall we say, for the um, lightning blasters and got nice design cues here staying faithful to the sort of designs from the lightning guns on the Talax uh, and the lightning cannon that we've seen on vehicles such as the Krios battle tank and then also things like the um, Mechanicum Knight Magira as well so yeah very good excellent well there you have it out of the pack review of the Mechanicum Krachnos assault tank that looks a lovely kit, really nicely turned out. You know, that to me for casting quality looks a 10 out of 10, so excellent work to, I can't remember what I called this person now, SC. Yeah, that all looks great. I'm really excited to build this one. I have a play around with uh, converting these, uh, doing this weapon conversion. But yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this review of this brand new Mechanicum vehicle. Let me know what you think about this tank in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time and goodbye.